Good evening. Oh, I, I'm, to be honest with you, I'm about to say, I don't even, I, I really don't know, girl. I have no idea. Oh, oh shit. Ah. She know what it is. Uh, Stella know what it is. Yeah. Can you give me a broom, please? Damn, and I really like them chips, Eliza. <laughs> <laughs> I read really, that was the last bag. Like, uh, I'm done. I was proud. I was like, yeah, he's gonna eat this. Oh, he ain't gonna just. Oh, my knee. Ah, shit. Guys, can you hear something? Guys? 
Say, bro, I come get the shopping cart. Let me do it again. You want to come get the? Oh. Uh, no, Oh, wait, not somebody being messy in the comments talking about y'all need to make sure y'all mute, lol. Bam, bitch. All right, so how am I sounding? Good. Okay, Good. Yeah. We could hear. All right. Okay, let's go back over. And just remember the two most important documents out of both classes, even, I mean, uh, this is just, uh, and the both classes are directed to people in the, in the sport class. So I know there's plenty of people in here that's, that's did in the 120 alone. But the most important things are, is the course schedule and syllabum, uh, syllabus addendum, because this tells you where, I mean, everything that you need to be, we need to know. At any particular date, you can see where we should be, we'll be testing. So unless something changes because of school closure, which because we're virtual, there's less likelihood of that happening, we're going to keep up with this. So make sure you do that, because that tells you where you should be at. The path inside of Alex also keeps pace with this. So um, everything is in tune. There's also uh, the notes that I have. That's what I use to uh, basically take you through the course. And then, of course, the thing I want to make sure is that everybody is signed up for Alex. You click on Alex the first time, I already used up my student account, so I can't show you the procedure again. But when you click on that, another window opens, and then you got to put in your name and your email address the first time. But after that, once you do it, you go directly into Alex. And it's, oops, I must have left it open. So click it. Oh, there, it's finally coming. It was just slow. So this is where you should be at working. It does not look exactly like yours, but uh, remember, I can go over and show you the the student view.
But for everybody in here, this is the most important thing to be in Alex in this class right here, the 120. You cannot make any progress without doing that. Once you finish your knowledge check, then this is what you're presented with. And see, it's got 2.1 there. Start my path. Okay. We'd already pretty much looked at 2.1 last period, last class. I mean, Tuesday. There's not a whole lot to it. It's basically definitions. But you work in each one of these. Each one of these 2.1 corresponds to, you know, what's here. See, there's 2.1. There's going to be one for 2.2, 2.3, 2.4. That path is sort of like the homework. It's, it's, it's just 10% of the grade, but keeping up with it is going to um, – help you master the material in the class so that when we test it'll be an easier transition because the the uh, usual problem is that people don't realize well you've got to perform on the test there's no way around that and I've got some uh, things to help you be able to do a better on the test but here's the thing you got to get used to when you're dealing with the path Let's see where it goes in, and we'll look at a couple of these. All right. So let's look at this one right here. This is just a kind of slight review of things that we looked at last time. What do you? Uh, what can we say about these two sets right here in A? Are they uh, exactly alike? Are they equal? Neither like equivalent nor equal. Okay. How are you convinced of that it's neither equivalent or equal? Uh, first of all, are they equal? Yes. Do they have the same elements? Yes. Look again. Oh, I'm the sorry. Is that equivalent but not equal? Five. B has 53, 54, 55. So they're not the same elements. So they're not equal. But, but. How many elements is in set A? How many? Count them. One, two, three. The commas give, each time we have a comma, we can get, that means another element, another element. The commas separate the elements. So how many is in set, the set A? Three. 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 I, Three. Having a hard time showing it, but three. How many is in B? Three. 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 So they both have the same number of elements. So they're not equal, but they are equivalent because of the same number. Why won't it? Oh, I got to hit start. So these are equal. Okay. Oh, it's giving me a brand new one. And so one, two, three, four, there's still four in each, but uh, they're all different, right? There's got H's and there's J, but there's no uh, K down here and there's no one up there. So these are e equivalent, but not equal. All right, so on B, a, I'm sorry, on B here, let me uh, do the annotation. All right, so uh, you might want to mute your mic. Uh, I think it's uh, David. Oh, my bad. Sorry. Because uh, it, uh, if you have mute whenever you talk, if, you, if it's not muted whenever you talk, it opens up. So when you want to talk, you can open, uh, when you purposely want to talk, you can hit unmute. Thank you. All right. So. Uh, all right, so let's look at this next one because this one right here, set B, is a set of energy greater than 13 and less than 17. So A 
and I'm talking about the B problem, the second one, I'm going to write it out. Which which uh, elements are going to be in this set? What would be the first one for A? Greater than 13. What's the first number greater than 13? 14. 14. Mm -hmm. And then is that enough or do we need to go to 17? It says less than 17. That's enough. Yeah. No, because I say less. So than there's three yeah. elements. Now, B, I'm going to try to write it on here. It says the set of integers greater than 13. So that would be 14, 15, 16, 17. It doesn't give us an endpoint. So we put the dot, 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 meaning that it just goes on and on. So set B has an infinite number in it. So these are definitely not equal because this one's got three. And this one's got many, 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 many. So these are not equal because they don't have the same elements. Now, it does have 14, 15, and 16, but I put the 17 there to show that it's going on and on and on. So they're not equal. And you know what? They're, not, they're also not equivalent because this one has three elements, and this one has infinite number of elements. So this is neither equal or equivalent. Now on C, so we're working on C, the set of odd numbers greater than 16 and less than 20. Whenever you got a description, it's a good idea to write it out in roster form so that you can compare. So greater than 16, so that would be 17, 18, 19, 19. Oh, I'm sorry, it's odd. Think uh, odd. And it'll make it shorter. There we go. So B has 38, 39, and 40 in it. The set of odd numbers greater than 16, so that would be 17, 19, 21, and 23 because it's less than 24. So 23 would be. So this one has four. This one has three. So this one, what would our answer be? Are they equivalent? Equivalent means they got the same number of elements. What's that? Neither equivalent nor equal. Yeah, they're going to be not equivalent or equal. Let me explain the equivalence. Set A has four elements in it. Set B has three elements in it. So in order for them to be equivalent, they have to have the same number of elements. And if those same number of elements are exactly the same, then they are equal. But this is neither. All right. So this last one. So 54, 53, 52 in A. Set B has 52, 53, and 54. Now they both have three elements, so they're equivalent at least, but are they equal? Yes. Yes, because, because order of elements is not important okay so order is not important also as i'd mentioned in the sport class if an if an item is repeated it only counts once they didn't have anything like that in here on this one so this one is both equal and equivalent So when right. you're talking about equivalent and it has the multiple of the or has two of the same number, you don't count the second one. So they're both they're still equal and equivalent. Right. Let's see. Did I have uh, over you pressed the wrong one?
Yeah. If uh, I was trying to think if I already had an example over here. But um, to answer that question. The order doesn't matter, but if something was repeated, in other words, if we had, um, let's put another one down here and call it C. So there we got one that's called C. All right. This one has three elements in it. A has three. So that's the way we write the, um, what they call. I'm going to type it out. I, I can't get the hang of this writing with a mouse like I thought I would. Just the type and takes up a little bit more room. So the number of elements in A is equal to three. The number of null elements in B is also equal to three. So what is the what are the number of elements in C? Now you can see four values in there, but repetition does not change, does not add another element. 53 is written twice, so it's only counted once. Okay, so all three of these have three elements because on set C, the repeated item does not count but once. Okay. So you're going to keep going through here. And as I had said is, we want to make sure these are right before we hit check. There's a real big tendency for students to just do the work and assume that everything's right and then hit check. And if it's wrong, then uh, you don't get through it as quickly. Well, let's think. I think I'm pretty confident of this. I had you to help me check. What happened? Now, I've used up one of my attempts, so I want to make sure this is right now. So what do we have wrong? Let's go back, take everything out, and double check. Don't keep putting it in. Let's make sure it's it's right. So this one, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. These are equivalent but not equal. Lessons. Hold on a second. Less than greater than sixteen and less than twenty-four. Let me double check this one because these are the exact same ones, right? 52. Yeah, oh, wait a minute. Look, up. I made a, I picked the wrong thing. See how easy it is? I must have double, uh, you know, hit by accident. So now, make sure everything else is right. Is everything else right? I checked the other three, and then I finally found my mistake. So if that happens, it's not the end of the world, but you don't want to get too many of those because if you get three in a row right, then you don't have to do all five. Let me just demonstrate that real quick. Let's go through another one fairly quick. Let's make sure it's right, though. All right, so 82, 83, 84, not the same here, but these are equivalent because they both have three elements. Even numbers, so it would be... Uh, for this one right here, I'm going to write it out so you can check for me. So greater than 3, uh, greater than 11, so that would be 12, 14, 
They're all even numbers, 16, 18. All right. Now, what do you notice about those two? Equal and equivalent? Yeah. They both got the exact same elements. So if they're equal, then they are equivalent. All right. So A is a set of uh, integers greater than 4 and less than 8. And as I had said, it's always a good idea to write them out in roster method because it makes it easier to see. So greater than four, and it's all of them. There's not odd or even. So what would be the first uh, integer after four? Five, six, seven. And what do we put? Do we put an eight? It says less than eight. If it said less than or equal to, we put eight. But it's only five, six, and seven. So let's do uh, this one. B is equal to greater than four. So that would be five, six, seven. And it doesn't give us an endpoint. So it's dot, dot, dot. It's an infinite set. So if the they don't have the same number of elements, then they're neither. They can be equivalent and not be equal. But if they don't have, if they're not equivalent, then it's it's neither. And then the same thing here, we got four of them there. We got three, so that's a neither equal nor equal. Anybody see any issues before I press go? So the first one, there's three that are not the same, so they're equivalent. These on B on problem B. We've got four elements, four elements that are the same, so they're both equivalent and equal. See, I, don't, I think the second one is going to be a red herring. It'll never be that because if they're equal, it means they got the same elements. So you can always rule that one out. So then uh, A is five, six, and seven. B is five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, blah, blah, blah. So neither. And then these are again the neither. So let's check. All right, good. See how they gave me double credit because I had two in a row? It's like a video game. All right. You get a bonus. All right, so uh, let's see if we get one more real quick. I want to see if I can show you, because if you miss, it, it essentially backs you up. So I think if you get three in a row, even if we miss one. So let's see. Uh, so this one, 26, 27, 28, 29. This is the same ones. They're just in a different order. So uh, both equal and equivalent, right, on D? If you see any you don't agree with, let me know, because... I'm moving fast here. So this one has DFG, and this is FQR. Same number, but different elements. So these are equivalent, but not equal. So I'm going to do B just kind of and uh, verbally. But that set of integers greater than 9, so that would be 10, 11, 12. So that's only three of them. So that's a neither. This one right here, there's always a choice, but don't ever take that one. So the set of odd, uh, so odd greater than 12. So the first one greater than 12 is 13. So 13, 14, 15, let's see, 13, 13, 15, And 19, let me write it out. So odd, 13, 
15, 19. So three elements, because less than 20. Now oh, this one what, is- What are missing 17? Oh, thank you. See how it's easy to make a mistake, especially see I'm rushing, because I want to show you this. So 13, 15, 17, 19. So this one's got four in it. And then this one. Greater than 18, it doesn't say odd, so this one's not going to be the same. Because uh, it could have the same number, could be equivalent. So greater than 18, so it would be 19, 19, 20, 21, 22, and that's it, less than. So now, they're not the same, but they're four in each. So that's equivalent, but not equal. All right, I'm gonna push my luck here. I'm not gonna check, let's see. I feel pretty confident. So it's three in a row, see, you get a bonus. If you start missing them, you're gonna get frustrated. So please, by all means, double check, go through them a second time, go through them in a different order so you don't get that kind of bias and think that what you, because it's just natural when you put something down to kind of defend it and not see if there's a mistake. So that's why it's always a good idea. Do it again, do it again. All right. So let's go back over and uh, start talking about some other stuff here. I'm trying to do the roster here at the same time by looking in because you got I got your names here. And then when we get towards the end of the class, I'm gonna double check that the names that I don't have that there are people in here. All right, so let's uh, get through to that and then go back to my notes here. All right. So 2.2 is where we kind of start getting into things that are a little bit, uh, I don't know how you would say, uh, it's not a whole lot, like I said, it's not a whole lot of math to it. It's just a matter of understanding what these concepts are. That's the first thing we want to talk about here in section two is a subset. A subset means that all elements of one set, we just call it A, are also in the other set, set B. And this is how we would write it. This is the symbolism here. Rather than write out the words, A is a subset of B, we use that little symbol there. And it looks like it's just a kicked over U with the equal sign underneath it. And that truly is an equal sign as it sees because we have the possibility of equality here. And I'm going to explain that to you in a bit. So two lines down, A is set two, four, and six. B is one, two, three, four, five, and six. So let me ask you, are all the elements here in this set? Two is right there. Yes. Four is over here. Six is over here. Indeed, B has stuff that's not in A, but that's not important. 
what's important is, is A contained within B? The numbers two, four, and six are in B, so therefore we can say that A is a subset of B. A is a subset of B. All right, so now we can also say, because it's got that little a line underneath it, we don't read it like we would say less than or equal to. But like I said, it really means the same thing. It means that there's the possibility of equality exists. So let's say we got another set, and it's just like A, we'll call it C. They're both exactly the same, but we can say A is a subset of B because 2, 4, and 6, those are also in C. And then you know what? It also works the other way around. That C is a subset of A. Because 2, 4, and 6 are in A. And 2, 4, and 6 in C. As a matter of fact, these two sets are equal. So if two sets are equal, then they are subsets of one another. And it's the subset with a little line underneath it. Because that little line underneath it essentially means equality. Now, that kind of seems a little bit strange because how could something be a subset if it's the same thing? Well, there's another term that we use if there's they're not exactly the same. And that's called the proper subset. With the proper subset, there's got to be at least one element in B, that's not in A. And notice that it now has this little line gone. It's just A kicked over UB, but that is read as is a subset or is a proper subset in this case. Is a subset, is a proper subset. So if they're equal, then it's not a proper subset of one another, two sets that are equal. So on this right here, if we've got A is got just a zero and a one in it, and B's got a zero and a one in it, they're equal. Okay, watch all the uh, mics, okay? So in this case, we can say that it's a subset, A is a subset of B, we can also say that B is a subset of A because they're equal. But if they're equal, then A is not a subset of B. A is not a subset of B. Or A is not a proper subset because they're the same. So if two sets are equal, then the proper subset relationship cannot exist. So let's now have another one that's called C. It's got one more in there. It's got a two. All right. So A doesn't have a two, but that's fine because C has zero and one. So A, this A is a subset. This A here is a subset of this one. Because zero's in there, one is in there, and it's got at least one more that's not in A. But A, all of A is in C. So we can say A is a proper subset of C, but not the other way around because these three items are not in A. The two does not exist in A. So C is not a proper subset of A, nor is C even a subset of A. So the line under the proper subset, I mean, under the subset um, is essentially, e uh, you know, equality. So with the subset symbol with the line underneath it, you can have equality and be subsets with one another. But if there's no line underneath it, there's got to be at least one different.
All right. So, um, can y'all hear me? Still? Yes, sir. Yes, yes okay. sir. Yes. 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 All right. So, um, so if we have any set and we want to find out how many subsets can we can take out, in other words, um, go in and take them out a piece at a time and then go in and pair them up. How many subsets we can have for a given set is pretty easy to find because what we do is we use that definition back from chapter, um, from section 2.1, where if we find the number of elements in that set, we can easily find the number of subsets. Now you remember, the reason why I wanted to go over that in the earlier class about the exponent is because you're going to use it here. The good thing is it's only two is the only base you have to worry about. What's going to change is the n, the exponent, because the exponent is the number of elements in the set. So for set A, it's got three elements, three elements. And I've got that written right here. Set B has six elements. All right. Oh, uh, I was going to put this on the syllabus while I'm thinking about it, the, the addendum. If you want to get the videos, they're already made. I already got videos for this class on the YouTube so I'm going to put that link in here. And I'll put it right underneath attendance because uh, So I'm going to put that there in case you want to go over there. And that's it right there. Uh, you have to go about three pages in. And I wish I knew how to order them. But uh, you got to go over a few. But they're in there because I got other classes. I got the college algebra. What's and, up, Pat? Uh, What's up? <laughs> so uh they start right here and like i said they're not quite in order but on the third page see there's the contemporary math stuff and and they uh it just basically goes by the title of the section so you just kind of got to do a search on it and you can find it. But I just wanted to show you about that in case you wanted it. I had somebody tell me they got bounced out. I don't know what, why, but if that ever happens, if you can't come for some reason, then you can get, always get to the videos there. All right. Let's get back here to the... So I'm just going to um, show you here. So there's three elements in this set right there. Three elements. So that's what that means. The number of elements in A is three. The number of elements in B is six. So if I want to find the number of subsets, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that little power thing so that's two to the third power so set a has eight distinct subsets 
In other words, we can take these out and I'll show you in a minute what they are. So right now we just want to know how many. Now, on this one, it's two to the sixth power. And what's two to the sixth power? I don't want that. Let's just use this one real quick. Is it 36? Nope. I don't think oh, so. Six times six. Oh, yeah. We two. Need To the sixth power is 64. All right. So 64. Can you use it in the calculator again so I can see? All right. So two. And it works the same way on that little Alex calculator and on the TI calculator. Then you hit that thing and then you hit your six. Otherwise, you can do it by hand to double check it. It's two times two times two times two times two times two. Six twos multiplied. That's what that means. So this is 64. So this set right here with six elements in it has two to the sixth power, which is 64 to six subsets. All right. We don't want to know what they are. And a matter of fact, that would be, uh, you know, excruciating pain to figure all those out. So we just want to know how many. And then in a few, I'll show you how to determine what they are for small ones. Now, that equation is always two in. It's always 2n. The n never goes away. What happens is every time you add a, a, a number to your size of your set, it doubles the number of subsets. So that's why it's a 2. That's why it's 2. Okay, I got you. And yeah, now, no, mi no minus 1? Now, that's next. This is for proper subsets proper subsets we're going to minus one because you know why we're minusing one because we got to throw out the one that's equal so eight minus one eight minus one is seven proper subsets and so for this one proper subsets is going to be 64 minus 1 or 63 proper subsets. All right. So eight distinct subsets for any set with three. It's, you know, it doesn't matter what they are because you just count the number. And then B has six, so two to the sixth power or 64 distinct subsets. And for proper subsets, you just got to take one away because you're taking away the one that's equal. So A minus one is seven and 64 minus one is 63. Go ahead. So would you always minus one for each uh, sub subsets? Proper subsets, see? For proper oh, subsets only. Time. Okay. Proper subset only is when you minus. So you always use two in, and then you yeah, always, always two with one. And then for just for just plain old subsets, it's two to the end. For proper subsets, you take one away. Okay. See? Yeah. All right. Now before we move on here, this is just something you just kind of got to know. It's going to be hard to see, but the null set is a subset of every set. Every set, no matter what it is, one of the subsets is going to be just nothing. Now, that kind of seems kind of strange, but I'll show you how all this works here.
All right. So we're going to recap what we did up there. And we're also going to look at them. I and we're only going to look at sets that have zero mm. elements, one element, and then two elements and three elements. Okay. So this set right here is an empty set, meaning that it has zero elements in it. So down here, the number of elements are zero. So two to the zero power is one. One. All right, so set here, the empty set has one subset. Now, I want to try to write something over here because we could do with another column. Number, number. I'm just going to put num proper subsets. Okay, so one minus one is zero. zero. So the empty set has no proper subsets. And the reason why is because the set itself, an equal set, is not a proper subset. It's a subset, but not a proper subset. Now, if we've got one element in our set, and again, it doesn't matter what the element is. We got one that's got an A in there, but it could be an X, a 50, or a crow. It could be a $50 bill. It can be anything as long as it's just got one element in it. Then we're going to use the math down here. Two to the first power, because the N, the power, is the number of elements in the set. Two to the first power is just two. So there are two subsets. So how many proper subsets? Two minus one is equal to one proper subset. So one proper subset, two regular subsets. So here's a set. It's got two in it. Again, it doesn't matter what the elements are. If we've got two elements, then so two elements. So two to the second power. And this is written backwards. Two to the power, two to the second is two times two, which is four. So there are four subsets in a set that has two elements. Uh, and let me back up up here. Okay, this is the one distinct subset um, right there. It's just itself because as we said up there in that rule, there's the prop the um, empties a set is a subset of every set. So let's look at the second one before I go down to this third one. So here are the subsets here. We got the set itself and we got the empty set because the empty set is a subset of every set. And then the set, it's, uh, set itself is also a subset. But you know what? It's not a proper subset. So there's only one of them and this is going to be the proper subset right there because that would be the one that was thrown out. So with this one too, as I said, there's four of them. There's the set itself. We can take A out by itself, and that's a subset. B out by itself, and that's a subset. What's that? You said a subset for two, um, the single one, is written backwards. Yeah, see how it's four? So this is where the two to the nth power is right here, see? Two to mm -hmm. the second power. So that's two times two, it's four. So that's where that four comes from. It's just like I okay. said, it's kind of written backwards in a sense four and then they're showing you how they got the four 
because it's two times two, which is two to the nth power. Um, well, which is two to the second power. That's how other is written as well. So is that yeah, they all are. I'm just saying is okay. that's how that's coming about. So this one has got three elements in it. So two to the third power is two times two times two, which is eight. So a three element set has eight subsets. Oh, and let me back up over here and do the proper subsets on this one. So four minus one is three proper subsets. So this one is gonna be what? Eight minus one is equal to seven. So all of these, here's the number of subsets. The proper subset is just one less. And so that's where your two to the n minus one comes in. Because I'm subtracting one from each one of these. So instead of one, I got zero. Instead of two, I got one. Instead of four, I got three. Instead of eight, I got seven for proper subsets. And as I had said is, the set itself is not a proper subset. So on this one here, you throw that one out. On this one, you throw that one out. So there's your one, two, three. And here's your one, two, three, four, five, six, seven for proper. All right, let's talk a little bit about this. I'm not going to get too much further tonight because I don't want to. It is the weekend, so it's looking at to be a little bit ahead. But this right here is just a visual about the relationship between uh, two sets. And there's four different possibilities. This thing right here, what we call a Venn diagram, you'll be seeing these. It's just a visual relationship or a visual a diagram that uh, illustrates the relationship between two or more sets. So if we have two sets with nothing in common, then essentially it looks like this. You got one set A and B, and they're not overlapping, they're not touching. So for an example, let's say we've got the odd numbers one, two, three, and the odd numbers five, seven, and nine. There's nothing common between those two sets. So therefore they're disjoint, see? One, two, three. Five, seven, nine, nothing common. It is possible for two sets to have the same thing, elements in them, as we saw about equality in that. But we can also talk about overlap, as we'll see in a minute. Now, with a proper subset, so if we said that A is a proper subset of B, A, the smaller set, is totally inside of B. Totally inside of there. So notice this example here. A is 3, 5, and 7. B is 1 through 10. And it's not written out, but, you know, it's got the dot, dot, dot. So that's 5, comma, 6, comma, 7, comma, 8, comma, 9, and comma, 10. All right? So 3, 5, and 7 are all in here. And they're not equal. So we can say that A is a proper subset of B. You can kind of look at it like this. Let's see if I can type those in there. So one, let's see, it was three, five, and seven are in there. And then outside of here, if I can find a good place to put them. So the ones that are not up there, I'm going to run out of room real quick here. I'm going to have to stack them. So we don't need the three. I'll put the four. Don't need the five. We'll put the six. We don't need this. Huh? Eight, nine, and ten. So all of those Or inside of B, but uh, out of A, rooms, I'm lost. What's up? I'm lost. About what? 
You say all of those are inside a B. Yeah. See those three right there? Those are inside a B. Because A is totally B within is inside of B. What's that? B is on the outside, right? The no, B represents this whole... The, the square is U. Okay, the whole square is U. All right. B is totally within U, the universal set. And A is totally within inside of A. See, this is the label for A here. This is showing A. This is B here. So now, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So all of B contains to all ten because A is totally inside of B. Okay, so A but will not be all of B one. is inside of A. Hmm? Okay, so A will be the small one and B will be the big yeah, one. Yeah, A is the small one. Oh, okay. That's right. <laughs> And that's the way it is with proper subset. The one that's the proper subset, the other one has to be smaller. That's good. Now, if they're equal, as we talked about before, then they're exactly the same. They contain the same elements. All right. So uh, I got an example there, and they're just written in a different way. Set A is written in roster form. And set B is written in the um, set builder notation. All right. So three, four, five, six, and seven. Go in there. Inside of there. But what's inside of this set? What's inside of B? It's just a different way of writing it. But that's saying it's in between 2 and 9, but not including the endpoints because there's no equal sign down there. So watch that. So it's between 2 and 9, but not including 2 and 9. So it starts at 3 and goes through 8. So these are just two different ways to write the same set. And that's one reason why I said a lot of times when you're comparing sets in that first little thing we looked at in the, in the Alex, if you write the roster form, it's easier to see because this can be a little bit confusing if you're not used to the inequalities. All right. Uh, Let's go on down to the last one. Overlapping sets, which is what most sets are going to be anyway. They're going to have some things in common, but not be this. In, but they're not going to fall in the category of those other three. They're not disjoint. One's not totally contained with the other, and then they're not equal. All right. So the universal set is the whole rectangle. So the whole rectangle has to have 1 through 15 in it somewhere. Because A and B are in the universe, so it's got to have 1 through 15 written inside of you somewhere. But how are we going to divvy them up? Well, we're going to look at A. And this is going to be kind of hard to write all these in there, but I'll give it my best shot. Because this is going to be 1... Two, three, four, five, six, and I'm uh, going to come back and put some commas just to separate them. So seven, we're going to keep on going. Eight. Nine and ten. Okay, so A has one through ten in it. Now we gotta watch out because 
B has seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. Now, before we go any further, let me ask you, are there anything in common between the two? Are there any common elements? Well, I got it written right there. Yeah, yeah. Seven, eight. So here's my advice about doing Venn diagrams. Always start in the center. Because I started putting those in A and that'll work, but I'm going to have to come back and take some of them out. Because these are now in A, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So you know what? I don't need these written over here because those aren't in A only. They're in there. Okay. So now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10 written in the A. Ignore the B for that. Play like it's not there. And you can see inside of that circle, you've got one through 10. But the seven, eight, nine, and 10 are common elements, which means they're also in B. So now let's go over here and fill out anything that's only in B. All right, it looks to be these three, right? 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Now, have we got all these numbers inside of the rectangle? We're missing a couple, I believe. That's one through 15. What's missing? 14 and 15. 14 and 15. 14 goes out here and 15. Those are the ones that are not in A or B, but they're still in the universe. I'm glad to see you all working on getting together and doing stuff. So that uh, those notes are really that long, 79 pages? Yeah, they are. But, I mean, we can always just print, like, what we need for the class. Yeah, it's... it's I, I it's, actually, uh, I didn't know it was that long, like, when I printed it out. So I just, yeah, like, you know, and I don't ever print anything out anymore. I just look at it electronically, so I don't ever pay attention to how much is yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. All right, let me get one more kind of thing to you before we uh, head out for the weekend. We talked about common elements here. And if two sets have common elements, there's a name for that. It's called the intersection. The intersection. The intersection of two sets are the common elements, elements that are common to both. All right. And here's the symbol. We already got three symbols plus the ones with the line through it. But this one right here looks very similar, but it looks like a U that's been uh, turned on its head now. It doesn't mean subset. It means intersection, intersection. Like if you got um, go out the corner of Canal and, and Carrollton and you stand out there in the middle, you're in the intersection. You're in both streets. That's what the intersection means. It just means common elements the elements that are the same. So it's written like that. So if we got two sets here again, my little Venn diagram, another Venn diagram without a the square part, because we don't really need to worry about that if we're looking at the intersection. But the intersections are the ones that's common. The blue area, the one that's shaded, that little football, is both A and B. And if you were to cover up the B part, you know, cover up this line and that zero and all, then all of those things on the left, one, two, three, four, five, and six are in A. But two, four, and six are also in B. And B also has a zero. So therefore we can say that A has the elements one, two, three, four, five, and six. B has zero, 
two, four, five, and six. I'm sorry, no, five. Zero, two, four, and six. And the intersection, which is what this says right here, are the ones in the blue, the ones that are common to both. See, two, four, six. Two, four, and six are the same in both, so that's called an intersection. So that's enough tonight. If you got questions, let me, uh, um, I think I got everybody that's on the roll. So I'm going to call the people that aren't, that I do not see. So in case I made a mistake. So Bryn Bordelon, I didn't see. Hiding out there, Bryn. Elise Combs, I didn't see. Shelton, is Shelton out there? I didn't see Shelton. Everybody else I got if I don't call your name, so don't worry. Simone Davenport, I didn't see. You're not hiding out there. Mariah, Mariah Finley, I didn't see. And Jacqueline, I didn't see her either. Are you out there, Jacqueline? Miriam Khalid, I didn't see. And, uh... Is Daniel out there? I'm on a yeah. There's Daniel. Okay, I just didn't get did you. You get me by chance? I got you now. Caitlin Russell, I did not see. Caitlin Russell, I didn't see. Kelsey, I didn't see Kelsey. Kelsey's not hiding out there. All right, I know. Uh, and Ariel White, I did not see. Ariel's not hiding out there. And everybody else I got. So if I didn't call your name, you're all right. The only people I call is people that I don't see. Mr. The... Cruz, I have a question. Okay. Okay. So, like, on Alex, are we supposed to be working, like, just on, like, I guess, like, working at our pace or, like, Okay, this is the pace. This is the pace here. That was my question, too. The pace is the pace on here. I said, I mean, if you stay within two days of this, you'll be all right. But you can't get behind too far because let me give you a scenario here. Let's say you work and then you try to do all this stuff at the last and maybe you're able to do it. When Mm -hmm. it starts coming due, because it's going to start coming due and they'll come one right after another. Right. Then, okay, you may not have a chance to do all of it. Right. All right. Okay. You may not have a chance to do with it, even if you stay at this pace, but you're more likely to do that. So you can't, because we got a test at a certain time. Right. You can't really do, can't really pace too much. Now, what I'm going to do is, if you've not finished all that by the time Mm -hmm. test time comes, you're going to have a review in there that is an assignment, and you can work that multiple times in order to get ready, and you can take the test with that. And I've had people who are successful doing it that way because it is tough keeping up with this, especially you got family and and working and all that. So So, so there's like a plan B. Um, every test yeah there'll be a review and you'll see it like uh, about five or six days before the test so and we'll have a day in class where i'll have you just working on it and you can Mm -hmm. shoot questions to me and i'll uh help you with them okay okay thank you so much great all right thank you mr cruz you have a great okay bye-bye yeah have a good weekend thank you have a nice weekend Okay, you too. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. All right, y'all have a good one. Bye-bye. Bye. Have a good one. Thank you.